Every week is a big week in AI news and one of the many announcements from last week is the release of Claude 4 from Anthropic and I'm going to be showing you in this bubble tutorial video how you can add Claude 4 into a bubble app and it's going to be dead simple I'll take you through every step but before I go any further if you're building an app with bubble and you really want to accelerate that process and you're just tired of trying to hunt down the answers to your questions then do join our community there's a link down in the description because we've got an AI assistant trained on all of our tutorial videos all of our courses and about 90% of the time you'll get a direct helpful answer otherwise I'll jump in and help you out directly so do click the link in the description to join our community today let's launch uh, into our bubble app and have a look at Claude 4 so I'm going to go uh, to my page here and uh, I'm just going to put the essential items on here. Now, if you're new to Bubble, we've got tons of tutorials covering um, basically what's going on. But uh, I'm just going to add in a multi-line input because I need somewhere to put my message that I'm sending, Claude. Uh, and then I'm going to add in my button. And there we go. So this is just going to be send message. Now, this is an app that I've done a lot of demos on before. Uh, so, if, in fact, you can see here that I've done this with Claude 3.7. We're going to do Claude 4 here. Um, so, I now need to make an API connection through to Claude. And that will involve me going uh, and looking at their API documentation for developers. And how do I translate this into my Bubble app? Well, I need to go over to Bubble and go into plugins and go to the API connector. If you don't see this, you can add it through plugins here. And as you can see, as I've just said, I've got tons of demos, anything from web scraping through to SEO tools. Um, we're gonna add in a new one. I'm gonna call this one Claude. And then we need to authenticate with private key and header. How do I know that? Well, if I go back to messages, I can see that in the header of a call, I have to send across my API key and its key name is X API key. So I'm gonna copy that and go across here. It's bubble auto fills authorization here. That's because authorization is the key name used most of the time, but some APIs just like this one from Anthropic uses a different one. Uh, and then I'm going to go back because does it require bearer? Again, some API keys require bearer before. No, it doesn't. So I'll get back. And I'm just going to paste in my API key. And of course, uh, I've got it um, obscured here, but I'll also be deleting this key before publishing this video because this is like a password to your account. If your account has got $20 in it and someone gets access to this private key, they can bleed your account dry and it's going to cost you that $20. Uh, so now let's go ahead and add in a call. So I'm going to call this one send message to ai and i'm going to use it as an action this just means that it's going to be a node an object in a workflow the user is going to click a button and then this action is going to run and i'm going to do something like display the response i then need to make this post how do i know it's post well if we go back to the documentation we can see here that it is a post request and here is the endpoint so i'm going to copy this paste it in and now we've got the body. So if you're not seeing body, it's because you've probably got this as get. It needs to be post. Uh, and then we go across here. And here is our body. Now, this is just the bare essentials of what's needed. You can um, include much more uh, contents, different parameters. Ooh, container's a new one. Not seen that. Uh, yes, things like uh, MCP servers, so it's all very current. Um, but I'm just going to copy this bit, the bit in between the uh, quote marks. I'm going to paste that in. Now, I don't want to be using Claude 3.7. I want to be using Claude 4. Uh, so here we go, introducing Claude 4. And I want to be using this one. No, not Opus, of course. Uh, Opus is really expensive. Um, in fact, let's just have a quick look at pricing because the main important bit is that Claude 4, I checked this before, just double checking it now. Yeah, Claude 4 is the same price as Claude 3.7. Now they're saying it's more intelligent. I've not run many tests of it. Uh, our own AI system that serves our community, uh, that's been using, it was Claude 3.5, now it's Claude 3.7. I've not tested it on Claude 4. So I would suggest that because it's the same price, it's really worth going in, um, in your dev version, updating it to Claude 4, running a few tests, 
uh, hopefully you'll notice an improvement in intelligence. Uh, if anything, at least it's not more money, but I would definitely test it just to check that you're still getting the same sort of output as you were before. In fact, I was working with a bubble collection client. And if you want to work one-to-one -one with me, click the link down in the description. Um, and uh, we updated the intelligence of the model. And that actually meant that we had to improve the system prompt because it needed a more detailed, more uh, kind of uh, prescriptive uh, system prompt in order for it to hit the same type of output because the intelligence had increased it actually made the output not what my coaching client was intending um, so we have to go back to I've just lost it this page go back to it so we want Claude sonnet four uh, we go back here and we just update this part here uh, and now I'm going to initialize it. And this is just our way of testing. Has everything that's been entered so far, uh, is it correct? Are we going to get any errors? Now, I think we are going to get an error because I think I've missed something, but I'm going to try it. Yes, we have to include the anthropic version in the header. Now, that was clear and I've missed it. It's this bit here. We don't need to include content type application JSON anymore because Bubble now makes that a default unless you supply an alternative. So I'm going to add it in as a shared header because it's not just specific to this API call. For example, I could have many different uh, ways that I'm using Claude in my app. I'd have different API calls. I'd add another one in here. And then they'd all be authenticated with the same API key uh, and they'd all be using these same shared headers. So I'm going to paste that in there. It needs to be formatted just like that. Now let's initialize our call. And we get a response back. So uh, most of this we can completely ignore. You can, of course, uh, track how many tokens were used. And we're going to go down here and we can see that in the response, this is what we're interested in. We want to be displaying this back to our user, which is, hello, nice to meet you. How are you doing today? Is there anything I can help you with? So I'm going to uh, click save and I click save because now it is ready to use in a workflow. If you can't find the API call that you set up in your workflow, it's likely because you've got this set as data when it needs to be action. And it's likely that you've not initialized or you've made a change that requires you to reinitialize your call in order for it to show up in the workflow. So we'll do just that. When this button is clicked, I'm now going to search for Claude. Uh, and it's Claude send message with AI because that's exactly what I've labeled it in the API connector. Now, I need to make a specific part of this dynamic. I don't want just to edit the whole call in the workflow. So I'm going to go down here and it's this part that needs to be dynamic. And make sure you include these speech marks. Uh, and I'm going to use the triangle brackets as stated just here. Uh, and I'll say message. Now, if I reinitialize it, I'm going to get an error because I'm sending an empty message. So what I need, would need to do is just put something like this in order for the reinitialize this kind of test process to work again. It also is not private. Private is referring to is this data that you need to protect from the user running this workflow. For example, your API key, you don't want your user to be able to access that data. But this is data the user has provided and it needs to be accessible in the workflow so it can't be private. Um, let's now go across to um, here and I'll say it is going to be uh, our multi-line inputs value JSON. So notice now, instead of giving us the whole API call to uh, JSON object to customize it, it's just giving that field that I created called messages. And I'm going to add in format as JSON because that's going to add those speech marks back in on either side. And it's going to escape and make safe any special characters that could be mistaken by the code for code rather than text from the user. It, it, it's a really common issue countless times uh, that uh, someone thinks that they've got their AI working, whether it's OpenAI or it's Claude, they've got it working in their bubble app. Uh, and then when their, their user puts like a colon or a speech mark in, they get a syntax error. The way to solve that is to remove the speech marks from the API connector and to put them back in using formatted as JSON safe. I then need a way of displaying this back to my user. And I believe I've already got this set up probably. Uh, which is if I delete these. Right, this is what your page will look like. We're going to use a custom state. It is like a temporary store for a variable. Custom states are not being written to the database. If the page is refreshed, the data is lost. But in this demo, this is what is most appropriate. Uh, so I'm going to just say response. And it's of type text. 
and then I'm going to add in a text label and I'm going to refer to it because I want to print the output so it's my page which are called Claude 4 custom state response and then that's going to print it now all I'm missing here in the workflow is that I need to set the state so my Claude 4 response and we now need to find bubble has broken down structured the json object that we get back from claude uh, and we just have to find where our response is so it's content now this is common across most ai models which is that you can have an n parameter like how many responses do you want to get back it's not really it's popular when they first came out kind of gpt 3.5 it's not really used in i can't think of many use cases nowadays um, but it still means that you get a list of responses so of this list we just want the first item uh, and then we want its text and now i'm going to preview it and I've just noticed that because uh, I've taken this from a previous demo, it's, I'm not doing thinking and reasoning. I believe it's going to be the same. Uh, let's just edit that. So I've done a video talking about thinking and reasoning uh, with Claude. Uh, we use it with our AI system within our community. It does really improve the quality of output, especially if you're bringing in RAG, bringing in a knowledge base. Um, but for now, we'll just be running uh, Claude 4 and we'll say uh, what is the date and I'll send message now I believe that Anthropic is going to be inserting the date into their own prompt uh ah, okay they don't interesting but we still get a response let's just say uh can you help me now this is going to overwrite the custom state and it just says uh, can you help me of course so there we go that is how you can add in Claude 4 into your bubble app now Bubble has just released streaming and I'm going to go ahead and record a second video where we'll take what we've built here and we're going to uh, stream the text in instead of having to wait for the full response uh, and then for it to show up. So uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you're new to our channel uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.